Can we get into the word of God? I want to talk to you this beautiful morning under the topic, Jesus saw me. Amen. Jesus saw me. Yeah. When people couldn't see me, Jesus saw me. Amen. When nobody noticed me, Jesus saw me. Auntie Jesu, when I'm born, he saw me. Jesus saw me. When they wrote me off, he saw me. When they threw me in the dustbin, he saw me. When they saw me as a dirty dog, he saw something worthy, something usable. He saw. I don't care who has not seen you, but there's somebody who has seen you. The Alpha and the Omega has seen you. The I Am has seen you. Jesus seen you. Uboni religious. Uboni religious. Uboni Jesus. Bobo niwa, Boba bona chase. So, sleeping in my room in the midnight hour, crying my lungs out, he saw me. No money in my bank, he saw me. No food in the fridge, he saw me. So, why are you crying when Jesus has seen you? Why are you crying when the master has seen you? Why are you depressed when the master? It doesn't matter who doesn't recognize you. Jesus has seen you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look, the 19th chapter. Verse number one to nine in the NIV. And Jesus entered Jericho. No, don't, don't stop. Continue to flow. And Jesus entered. These two words they preach to me. Jesus entered. Akena Jesus. You see, when, when Jesus enters, it doesn't matter who left. When Jesus enters, everything is going to be alright. I was listening to a song this morning that says, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be alright. Be alright, be alright, be alright, be alright. I've got a feeling. The Holy Ghost told me. Jesus told me. I cannot Jesus. She can never say I cannot Jesus. You see, things change, my brother, when Jesus enters. When Jesus enters in a house, things turn around. When Jesus enters in a business, things go upside down. Something happens when Jesus enters. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but Jesus is about to enter in your life. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. In that broken life, Jesus is about to get in. The master is about to get in. The I am that I am is about to get in. And Jesus entered Jericho. And he was passing through. I need to talk to somebody this morning. That he has entered but he's passing through. In other words, this opportunity you are having today. You're going to take advantage of it. Because he's passing through. I heard of the woman with the issue of blood. When she heard that he was passing through, she made always possible to make sure that by the time he passes through, I have had my encounter. And this is a message to somebody. Don't allow him to pass you by. Oh my God, I know a singer that said, Jesu, Jesu, Linda Simpiti, Simply tell her, don't pass me by. 
Somebody shout, Jesus, don't pass me by. He has entered and is passing through. Who said me? We are fit. Even right now in this service, there is a move of God in this place. And don't allow this move to pass you by. And the Bible says, and a man was there. Verse number two. By the name of Zacchaeus. I, I don't understand something. The name Zacchaeus means to be pure. To be innocent. But when you study the life of this man, he was corrupt. He was a sinful man. And yet his name meant purity. What are we learning, church? We are learning that none of us can achieve purity by our own human strength. The reason why Jesus must come in is because we can't do this thing on our own. We need him to come into our lives. We need him to come into our families because there are, there are potentials we have. Like Zacchaeus, his name means purity, but he can't tap into that purity by his own accord. And Jesus is entering today in the life of somebody to make you achieve those dimensions and levels. I see you achieving those dimensions and levels. Somebody shout, blessed be the name of the Lord man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. Listen, he was a chief tax collector. He was the CEO of SARS. And the Bible says he was wealthy. He was a chief collector. In other words, he had people, chartered accountants working under him. Economists working under him. He had a team of departments. If it was in South Africa, in all the nine provinces, in all the major towns and cities, he had people working under him. He was a big man and he was wealthy. And verse number three says, he wanted to see Jesus. This is a great man, but he never allowed his greatness to get in the way for him to see Jesus. He was great, but he wanted to see somebody greater. I came here to preach to somebody. Don't allow your greatness or the lack thereof to hinder you from seeing Jesus. The Bible says, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. The man was short. He could not see over the crowd. In other words, the crowd was a hindrance to this man. The crowd was the reason this man could not encounter Jesus. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but the Lord is saying to you, be careful of the crowd. We don't follow the crowd, we follow the cloud. We don't follow people, we follow the Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit, they shall be called the sons of God. He could not see over the crowd. My God. This man, he knew that Jesus was coming. And verse number four, the Bible says that he ran ahead. When you know that Jesus is coming, you got to run ahead. When you know that God's power is coming, you got to run ahead. What do, I, what do I mean when I talk about running ahead? This is giving ahead. Giving for blessings you don't even have yet. This is praising ahead, praising God for blessings and breakthroughs you don't even have yet. Somebody at the back, open that door for ventilation reasons. Hallelujah. Shall God ever say, you got to run ahead. So he ran ahead of the crowd. Oh my God, he outsmarted the crowd. Listen to me, if you want to encounter Jesus, you got to learn to run ahead of the people. You got to learn to run ahead of the challenges and the problems and the situations. Am I talking to somebody? You got to learn to deal with the opposition. You got to learn to deal with the haters. You got to learn to deal with the people that don't like you. You got to run ahead. Somebody shout hallelujah. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. 
just imagine the CEO of SARS climbing a tree. What a dimension of humility. Church, it takes humility to see Jesus. It takes the highest dimension of a humbleness to see Jesus. It takes forgetting our status to see Jesus. It takes forgetting how much money you have in the bank to see Jesus. And he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way, if this is the way that Jesus is coming, I will climb the tree. If indeed he's going to pass here, my goodness, I will sow my seed here. I don't want to invest in a place that Jesus is not there. I don't want to put my life, my energy in a place that Jesus is not coming. I know that he's coming this way. Verse number five, the Bible says, when Jesus reached the spot, when Jesus reached the spot, this is a prophecy. Jesus is going to reach your spot. This is where the man is standing. Jesus could have taken any other way. But Jesus decided this man cannot invest this much in wanting to experience my power. And I don't reach the spot. This man ran ahead of the crowd to see me. I cannot pass the spot. This man climbed a tree to see me. I cannot pass the spot. I gotta reach the spot. Jesus is coming to somebody's spot today. That spot, Zacchaeus, you've been waiting there for so long. But he's coming to that spot. You've been crying at that spot for so long. He is coming to that spot. You've been feeling pain in that spot for so long. He is coming to that spot. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but he is coming to that spot. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He's coming to that spot. He's coming. That place which only you know. That spiritual spot. That health spot. That financial spot that social spot he is coming to that spot that spot that is not available on google maps he is coming to that spot see jesus does not need you to send a location <laughs> oh my God. Jesus is not Uber. He does not need a request. He knows how to get to you. Some of you are saying, but man of God, do you understand how deep I am in my situation, in my spot? He knows how to get there. I had a song say that His love is so wonderful. It is so high. 
You can't get above it. It is so low. You can't get below it. It is so wide. You can't get around it. Another singer said, it reaches to the highest mountain. You may be on the highest mountain, but the power of God can reach you on the highest mountain. And my God, it can reach in the lowest, 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 lowest valley. Hey, it can come to where you are. Can reach you. This is the power of Jesus I'm talking about. And he reached the spot. He, he reached my spot. The spot where my great, great, great granddaddy failed. He reached my spot. The spot my great, great granddaddy failed. He reached my spot. The spot my daddy failed. He reached my spot. The spot where the devil was laughing at me, saying, you are also about to fail in the same spot. Your granddaddy failed here. And you're going to fail too. But, but he reached me. I cannot chase A God who does not need anybody to open a door. A God who has not voted in and cannot be voted out. The first and the last. The alpha and the omega. I cannot just. He reached the spot. And the Bible says, he looked up. The NKJV says, when he was come, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. Put it in the NKJV. He looked up and saw him. He looked up and saw him. You gotta understand something why this is very important. I'm from Limpopo. And this verse makes sense to me. Because in Limpopo we have a lot of trees. Something can hide on a tree. You look at a tree, you see the leaves. But you don't see the thing that is in the tree. When we were young, we used to play hide and seek. And I tell you, if we hid ourselves on the tree, you wouldn't see us, I'm telling you. But the word says, he looked up and he saw. The leaves did not hinder nor obscure his view. The branches. Sometimes people fail to see you because of the branches and the leaves and perhaps the birds that are on the tree. But in the case of Zacchaeus, nothing hindered him from being seen. In 2023, 
you are not seen. You were not recognized. You ran ahead of the crowd. You climbed your tree. But nobody saw you. I'm glad they didn't see you then. Because them seeing you or not seeing you, it was not going to change nothing in your life. But now, the master saw you. He saw me. Wow, what a miracle to be seen by the one you were trying to see. Those who strive to see the master will be seen by the master. What a beautiful thing when the one you are trying to get their attention finally they give you their attention. You gotta fight the opposition Zacchaeus. There are many Zacchaeuses who are saying, yeah, I can't see him because I'm short. I am not blessed because I am short. My life is not here and there because I am short. Hear me very importantly. In life, you are not yet a failure until you open up your mouth and make an excuse. Once you can give us an explanation of why your life is not progressing, you are putting a stamp on the fact that you are a failure. She can never say, you, have, you are not yet a failure. You have not yet failed until you give an excuse. This is the reason the man is short. It's a reason. The entire crowd is blocking his view. They decided, but there is a tree that is taller than all of them. I may be short, but there is a tree. Child of God, there is always a tree. Now pray that may you see your tree today in the name of Jesus. May you recognize your tree in the name of Jesus. And he saw him. And let us hear. Take it back to NIV. And said unto him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Zacchaeus, come down. But Lord, I climbed my tree to see you. And now finally, I'm seeing you. I'm enjoying my view of you. And the first thing you're going to say to me is, come down. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I climbed the tree to see you. Finally, I can see you. And now, come down. I must stay at your house. Come down. I want to give you more, Zacchaeus. I want to come and stay in your house. As I'm building up my case, why did Jesus say, come down? First of all, let us understand verse number four. The man was upon a sycamore fig tree. There are so many prophetic things about this tree. First of all, a sycamore fig tree. It has the leaves of a vine. But the fruits of figs. 
the leaves and the fruits do not match. This kind of a tree, it looks like something else when you are far. But when you get close, the fruits are different. In other words, Jesus was saying to Zacchaeus, I cannot be with you nor relate with you when your leaves and your fruit are not aligned. If your leaves are of a guava tree, I need the fruits to also be guava. In other words, Jesus is saying that I cannot be in a place whereby there is no order. I'm a God of order. There is no order in your life, Zaki. Come down from the tree. In other words, when you want to move with God, you gotta have to come down with certain things. All of us have a tree. Every person in the house has a tree. Some have a tree of gossip. Come down. Some have a tree of prayerlessness. Come down from that tree. Some have this kind of a tree. Some have that kind of a tree. Some are on the tree of pride. Come down. Listen, when you want to move with God, there are certain things you're going to have to let go of. When God appears to Moses on a burning bush, he says, take off your shoes. For the place where you are is holy. You can't come here with those shoes. Take them off. A shaker never say you're gonna get to get to let go of certain things. This sycamore tree, its wood was used to make furniture. The wood from this tree makes furniture. But it doesn't make normal furniture. The wood from this tree made coffins. And we all know that a coffin embodies death. Nobody celebrates where there is a coffin. In other words, Zacchaeus is climbing on something that embodies death. And Jesus, who is the bread of life, cannot associate with what embodies death. Come down from that tree. Come down from that tree. Come down. Come down. Come down from that tree. So you're going to say, come down from that tree. Why? I must stay at your house today. Verse number six. So he came down. Shake your say he came down. When Jesus comes, says come down, you got to come down. And welcomed him gladly. Verse number 7. And people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. I don't know what is wrong with people. The Bible says that people that are well don't need a physician or a doctor. It is people that are sick. In other words, people that are righteous, they are holy than thou. They don't need a savior. But it is the sinners who needs a savior. You see, people don't understand the depth of this text. Jesus does not have a problem with the sinner. In fact, Jesus loves the sinner, but he hates the sinner's sin. The sinner he wants, but the sin of the sinner is what he does not want. And he came to be the guest of a sinner. And this is a word to somebody. God is getting ready to do certain things in your life this year. People will begin to matter. Some of you, he's going to bless you this year. That people will begin to matter. People will begin to complain. And verse number 8, listen to this. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look. Look, Lord, here. 
Now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Somebody say transformation. In other words, this man had encountered genuine transformation. Whereby he admits that I've not been living right. And Lord, I'm going to do right. You can't encounter Jesus and remain the same. You can't encounter Jesus and still live the same life you used to live before encountering him. When the man encountered Jesus, there was evidence. And there will be evidence today that somebody has encountered Jesus. And Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house. Because this man too is a son of Abraham. Today, salvation has come to this house. Today salvation has come to this house. Today salvation. Today, not tomorrow. Today salvation has come. You see, you need to understand something. Zacchaeus was looking for salvation. Somebody in here already have received salvation. In other words, this text to you could refer to your need. Your need has come to your house. What you need has come to your house. Can you help me to preach to five people? Say, what you need has come to your house. What you need, what you need has come to your house. This is a prophecy to you, child of God. What you need has come to your house. The thing that you desire has come to your house. The thing that you covet has come to your house. That promotion you've been praying about has come to your house. That miracle you've been asking God for has come to your house. That breakthrough you've been fasting for this January has come to your house. Am I talking to somebody? It's not at the bus stop, but it is in your house. It is not in the mall, but it is in your house. Somebody, when you leave this church today, going into your house, you are going to encounter the blessing of a lifetime. When you get to your house today, you are going to encounter your miracle. When you get to your house today, things are going to be happening in that house. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Today salvation has come to this house. Hey, the miracle has come to this house. Hey, the breakthrough has come to this house. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says because this man too. He's a son of Abraham. This man too. He is a son of Abraham. Oh my God. I know you messed up, but you are still the son of Abraham. This man too is a son of Abraham. You see, sometimes people will write you off as if you also are not a child of God. This man too is a child of God. This man too, Jesus has died for him. This man too, he qualifies to have the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say you too, you qualify to your neighbor. Say you too, you qualify. Says this man too is a son of Abraham. The same breakthrough you experience, this man too must experience it. Okay, you are a millionaire. This man as well must be a millionaire. Today I'm talking to Zacchaeus. You see, Zacchaeus, there were things he thought he didn't deserve. But I came here to tell you that you too, you are also a child of God. 
you too also you deserve to be healed and delivered and set free you too also you deserve and you qualify what others are getting and that is why he saw you that is why he could not miss you because you too also are a son of Abraham that's why he had to see you today as I'm closing my message but he said, he saw me. Say it from your heart. Say, he saw me. As I close. Sometimes we get in places. That we are even ashamed of. Things we wouldn't want anybody to know. Things we are not proud of. But Jesus has a way of seeing you and reaching you even in those places. Sometimes the doctor gives us a report that is like a death sentence. says this is a chronic disease but, 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 but Jesus he has a way of seeing you in places like that what the doctor can see the Messiah can see what the lawyer can fix Jesus can fix and if you are seen by Jesus that is enough you don't need any other thing. If you are seen by Jesus, that is enough. And today I'm preaching to somebody who felt that Jesus is not enough. I need Jesus plus. No. God is powerful in your life when he's all by himself. Jesus plus nothing is more than enough. Jesus plus something you are diluting his power. If you want to see his power, he by himself is enough. Go and ask blind Bartimaeus. He'll tell you that he healed me by himself. Go and ask the woman with the issue of blood. She'll tell you that he restored me by himself. Go and ask the ten men with leprosy. They'll tell you that he healed us by himself. Go and ask Sehasuisa Katara. He'll tell you that he healed me by himself. He is enough. The one that has seen you today is enough. And because he has seen you, there's going to be a change in your life. There's going to be a restoration in your life. I know some of you are saying, servant of God, the enemy has eaten so much and has stolen so much in my life. But I heard Hosea 2.5 say that the Lord shall restore. The Lord shall restore all that the locust has eaten. The caterpillar, the palmer worm, and the canker worm. You see, my goodness, when Jesus turns to you, Zacchaeus, it is your turn. It is your turn to get blessed. It is your turn to come out of trouble. It is your turn for your life to be turned around. He has turned on you, and it is your turn. Somebody shout hallelujah. He saw me. He saw my mess. He saw the things that people are ashamed of identifying with. The Bible says that Jesus saw a woman who was in the act of adultery. Men brought her to him and said that this woman deserves to be stoned to death. And the Bible says that he knelt down and began to write on the ground. He began to write on death. What does this thing mean? It means that Jesus is willing to touch areas of your life that people don't want to touch. He's willing to touch areas of your life that everybody is running away from. And today, he saw you. And he's coming for those areas that were hurt. I'm talking about that place whereby somebody broke your heart. I'm talking about the pain that divorce has caused in your life. 
Jesus is coming for that area. I'm talking about that heartbreak, the heartbreak uh, when the person told you that they want to marry you, left the door. I'm talking about that pain. He's coming for that pain. Talking for the shame you went through when your boss said that it is over. You are fired. He's coming for that. Shake your neighbor say, he's coming for that. He's coming for areas that you can't fix on your own. If you could fix it on your own, there was no need for Jesus. The fact that you can't fix it on your own, it means that it is an opportunity for the power of God to manifest. Your problem is nothing but an opportunity for you to see the power of God. How would you know that God is a provider if you had everything? So you need to have shortage in order for you to see that he can provide. How would you know he was a healer when you are not sick? That is why that sickness is in your body. So you can know he is a healer. How would you know that he can provide and, and make you prosperous when you were rich? That is why he has allowed you to be poor so that you can see his power to make you rich. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is impossible to you. But it's not impossible to God. Jesus says, know ye not that all things are possible with God. And this is a prophecy. When he sees you, you are entering the zone of all possibilities. Things that were impossible will be possible. Things that you couldn't do, you will do. Places you could not reach, you would reach. Because the master has seen you. Stop crying for the people that don't see you. They are not necessary. If he sees you, he's enough. If he favors you, the people will favor you. Luke 2, the Bible says that the boy grew in favor with God and in favor with men. When you grow in favor with God, favor with men will come naturally. Stop chasing the favor of men. Be satisfied with the favor of God. He saw you. Somebody shout, he saw me. Let us be up on our feet. He saw me. Ben, come. He saw me. Worship team, come. He saw me. I want a person who can sing this song in the team. Hanti Jesu Unampona. Hakelela Joa. If you can sing that song, worship team, come. I want you to come and do this song for us as we are going to pray. Shake a neighbor, say, He saw you. Get the other neighbor, say, He saw you. And because He saw you, Things are going to turn around for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Take it worship team. The Lord bless you. Oh, be 
in the building if you can kneel down kneel if you can cry cry oh my god he saw you I wanted to pray a prayer of appreciation a heartfelt prayer that God you saw me my god when I was crying you saw me oh when I was in pain you saw me oh somebody open up your mouth saw me Jesus So, you didn't see me to come and leave me here. You didn't bring me this far. Come on, somebody pray. You saw me, Jesus. Saw me, Jesus. You reached me, Jesus. You blessed me, Jesus. You healed me, Jesus. You restored me, Jesus. Oh, the boss. Sandy Baha, Yadabaha. Shadi Baha Sute Baha Shode Boa Sada Baha Hey my God we pray as a church Thank you that you saw me I didn't deserve your grace But you saw me my God Relaka Hile Resaitu Ritua Kairi Akai You saw us Nebo Ya Nebo Senebo Ya Nebo Come on, pray, 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 pray. My God, lost, generationally lost, coming from an ancestral background. He saw you. He saw you. He saw you. He brought you out. He brought you out. Out of that generational shame, he brought you out. Out of that generational pain, he saw. Oh, kajenu mutu, zibalu rapela, kajenu dalisiriti because he saw you. I can't say us, I can't say bar. Wa kwezi ma yes, wa kwezi ma baba. Thank you. That each and every person in this building today was seen by you, was noticed by you, was recognized by you, was restored by you, was healed by you, was blessed by you, was elevated by you, was brought here by you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 